Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. This is the Office 365 Roadmap Radar for February 2021. Once again, we've waded through the roadmap so you don't have to. And this month, I've got 12 new features and changes to show you. So here we go. Teams meetings are getting a presenter view just like PowerPoint. Now, when you share your slides in a meeting, you can see them as thumbnails in a strip and you can also see your notes. To use presenter view, you just share your slides in a normal way, go to the share button and go to the PowerPoint section and then choose your slide deck and it will go to presenter view automatically. You'll see the thumbnails and notes and everyone else will see your awesome slideshow. Presenter view is private to the presenter in control and if another presenter clicks take control, the presenter view will close for the original presenter and open for the next presenter and they'll see the thumbnails and notes. This update should be available for everybody now. There's a new approvals app in Teams desktop. The goal of the approvals app is to allow you to send files for approval and then track all your approvals from Teams. You can add the approvals app to the left hand rail of Teams if you choose the ellipsis here type approvals in the search box, select it, and then add the app. Once it's installed, you'll see it on the left-hand rail, and then you can create new approval requests. You just name it, you upload the file you want to be approved, and then you choose the approvers, which could be one or many people. But right now, you can only upload a file from your computer and not pick one from Teams or OneDrive, which seems a bit weird, but hopefully Microsoft will fix that. When you upload a file from your computer, it gets stored in a folder in OneDrive called Approvals Documents. Once the request is sent, the approver will receive notification in their Teams activity feed, and they can view your request, open the file, and approve or reject it. And when they've made their decision, you'll get notified, and you can track all your approvals inside the Teams app. You can also start your approval from a channel post or a chat. The approvals app will also integrate with SharePoint and Power Automate. So if you need to make more sophisticated approval workflows, you can do that. The approvals app is available now on the desktop versions of Teams. Now we can add calendars to channels in the Teams desktop app. This will make it easier for team members to see scheduled channeled meetings. You can add a channel calendar as a tab just go to the channel you want to add the calendar to and choose the plus button. Search for channel calendar and then add it. Now everyone who uses the channel will see this calendar and can add meetings to it. You can add the meeting straight into the calendar or you can choose schedule a meeting from anywhere in the channel and it will be added to the calendar. Teams creates a new post in the channel every time a new meeting is created in the calendar. The channel calendar is available to all members by default, but guests in your team can't access it. Channel calendars should be available to everybody now. A new meeting option is being added to Teams. This will allow the organizer to manage chat in the meeting. So we'll be able to control when participants can chat and choose whether to let them do it either before, during or after the meeting. Now, if I schedule a meeting and go into it, edit it and choose the meeting options link you'll see there's a new option called allow meeting chat and you can switch that between these three options enabled anyone can chat at any time disabled no one can chat at all and in meeting only means that they can only chat during the meeting and not before or afterwards you can also make this change once the meeting has started from the meeting window if you go up to the ellipsis and choose meeting options you'll see the same option here, allow meeting chat. Choose your option and then save, and then that will take immediate effect. This update is rolling out now and should be available to everyone during February. And coming soon, there'll be an update to the Calls app for Teams desktop on Windows and Mac. It will attempt to simplify how we make and receive calls. Now, instead of contacts for voicemail and history being on different pages, they'll be combined into one view. This should make it easier to receive and return calls and manage our voicemails. And this update should be available to everybody in February.
there are new background images being added to Planner in the browser. We'll be able to add a background image to a Planner plan from a list of recommendations. The recommendations are apparently based on the name of the plan and are powered by Designer, which I think is the same machine learning system that PowerPoint uses to make design suggestions from your slides. In your plan, you can go to the ellipsis at the top, choose plan settings, and then you'll see a bunch of suggested backgrounds on the right hand side. So my first impression is that most of these backgrounds are pretty weird and distracting. So let's hope Microsoft updates them soon, or even better, lets us upload our own. Planner backgrounds rollout should be completed by the end of January, and so is available now. Another new feature coming soon for Planner will allow us to add attachments to tasks from a curated list of relevant files. It's gonna use machine learning again to make recommendations based on the tasks and who we are. We'll be able to choose from recommended files to add them as attachments to our tasks in Planner. This update should be available to everybody in February. Now an update for Microsoft Lists, and that's Lists Rules, something we've been waiting for for a while now. People with edit permissions will be able to create and manage rules for your lists. Rules are a way to automatically make things happen when a list changes. To make a new rule, when you have your list open, you can go up to the Automate menu and choose Create a Rule. You can also manage any rules you've created from here too. There are different types of rules to choose from. For example, you can create a rule that will fire off an email whenever a value in the list changes. In this rule, I want to check when the status column is equal to ready, and then I want to send an email to Megan. This feature should be available to everybody now. There's a new iOS app for Microsoft Lists. You'll be able to take all your lists around with you in your pocket. The homepage of the Microsoft List app shows you your favorites and recent lists, and you can choose them and view the data. It freezes the header and the left-hand column so you can keep track of where you are on the list, and you can add new items, you can use views, and you can filter, group, and sort. You can also create new lists here using the templates, and you can even view list data when you're offline. The List app for iOS is available to download now. Microsoft Forms is getting a new update, which will allow email receipts to be sent to all responders. Now when you're designing your form, you'll be able to go to the ellipsis, choose settings, and then come here to the response receipt section and choose allow receipt of responses after submission. So once a responder has completed the form, they'll receive an email in their inbox with a list of all their responses. When anonymous users of the survey submit the answers, they'll get a link to print or get a PDF of the answers they can then download onto their computer. This update is available to everybody now. There's another little update coming to Forms that's gonna let us format the text in our questions. Soon we'll see a toolbar that lets us choose bold, italics and underline to format wherever we are writing text in Forms. This feature started rolling out at the end of January and should be complete in early February. Here's one for you OneDrive fans. OneDrive in the browser is getting a dark mode. Dark mode is obviously supposed to reduce eye strain, so that's good for everybody. And we'll be able to turn dark mode on and off from the settings wheel in OneDrive. Dark mode is rolling out through January and February and should be available to everyone at the end of February. Okay, that's your lot for this month. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.